There. Hey guys, Phil here. I was just making up a song from scratch. That's called improvising, but it shares a lot of common ground with something called composing. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm actually really pumped for today and for this whole month because we're going to be doing just that and we're going to be doing it together. All right. Usually when I'm improvising, I'm more performing for you guys. But with this composition throughout the month, I'm going to ask for your help along every step of the way. I'm actually really, really excited about it. So here's what I want to do. I want to basically lay out the plan, how I see it, for the month. But of course, we'll keep it loose because I do want what we do together in these lessons to steer actually where we go. So I don't want to plan it too rigidly. But what I want to do is kind of go over my general thought for how we'll structure this month, including today. And then we'll just dig right in for today, OK? Uh, first, everyone say hey to Aiden. He's here helping out as usual. We couldn't do it without him. Everybody say hey to Andrew as well. You know Andrew from the comment moderation. Maybe some of you know him as an arranger as well. Well, today he's going to be adding yet another hat to his head. He's going to be uh, the one who's actually using the composition notation software today. So I've got both my hands free to play and to chat with you guys, while Andrew helps out greatly by actually creating the notation that we are going to write together. It's going to be really fun. Let's just take a brief look at the month here, all right? So week one, what I'd like to do today is we're going to focus on harmony. And we're going to keep this thing pretty top level today and pretty, we're not going to go into to the nitty gritty in terms of detailed rhythms and, and things like that. What I'd like to do is set the form of our song and then lay out a structure for harmony. It might seem simple, but there's a lot to that. So we're going to spend some time on that today. Now, we're going to keep our rhythm simple for now. Week two, we're going to switch over to melody. And again, we're going to focus on what scales do we use, what groupings of notes, and why. But we're also going to keep that more simple rhythmically, because the way that I like to write music is to lay the foundation and then go back in and start to carve more detail. Okay, so week three, what we're going to do is take what we've done, week one and two, which might look like basic chords and basic melody, and we're going to talk about how to rhythmicize it and how to add life to it by adding rhythm. Once we get to week four, what I want to do, I'm calling it polishing here because we're going to add some of the finer details. Things that we've gone over in the last few months, such as dynamics, right? Maybe some phrasing. Um, but we're also going to be doing what I think is a crucial part of creation here with composition, and that is revising. We can't be afraid to erase or change something that we've already put on paper. In other words, if you had the pressure of writing a final piece of music, as soon as you put your pencil down on a blank piece of paper, that would be a ton of pressure. I don't think anyone could work like that. Rather, you want to get out of your own way, put stuff down, and then not be afraid to tweak later on. That is a great formula in my own experience. And so what I'd like to do on week four is go back over what we have, now that we'll have gotten to close to the end, and see if we want to make any tweaks. If we're good, then we can add our expression, our phrasing and things, and then we can call it a day. And I think it's going to be really fun to have a completed project that we can add into the app. I think that the possibilities are endless. So I'm really, really excited about what we're going to be doing this month. And what I'd like to do to get started today is harmony. So why don't we go now, before we jump into our composition tools, by the way, don't think I forgot about you guys wanting song credits. We're going to do a pop quiz. This is pop quiz number one. Now, for those who maybe are joining new here, you may not know how we do this. Let me give a brief, uh, a brief explanation. The prize is always one free song credit for the interactive app. If you guys are watching and you don't have the interactive app, Sarah Pickles, I'm looking at you uh, and anyone else out there. Uh, you guys got to take advantage of this free trial we're doing. PlaygroundSessions.com backslash YouTube dash free dash trial. I'll also ask one of my, uh, my partners here today to, to throw that link into the chat as well. Uh, take advantage of that free trial because you can try the interactive app for 30 days with no payment up front and no strings attached. Okay, so if you don't have the app, like Sarah, she was kind enough to donate her free song credit. And 
uh, to someone who did have the app, and that was very kind of her. Uh, but if you don't have the app and you run a free song credit, you're missing out. you got to get the app. Here's how you win. I'm going to ask you to put, since this is pop quiz number one, I'd like you to put a one dash and then your answer. So here is our first question. We're going to reach a little bit further back. How many beats per measure in the time signature that we see on screen? The time signature is 3-4. And we want to know how many beats are in each measure. This is something that we covered, I want to say, in our theory month in January. Let's see if you guys can remember this. I'm looking for one dash and a number. And I'm going to go ahead and look for our first correct answer on this one, too. But I'm going to let some people come through and, and continue to write. And I'm just going to play for a second here. You guys get your answers in, and then we'll, we'll discuss. All right, let's take a look at the chat. I see a lot of answers coming through, and you guys, I'm really proud because I'm seeing 100% correct answers. This makes me really, really feel a lot of joy. All right, now the, the answer is three because the top number tells us how many beats are in each measure. The bottom number tells us what note gets the beat. So in three, four, we'd have three beats per measure. The quarter note would get the beat. And I'm gonna check the chat now. I see. Dave Kolash, first correct answer. Dave, good work. You got it. I'm going to give some honorable mentions to Eric Rupp. Eric, that's a new name. I'm not sure you, I've seen you in the, in the live lessons before. Good to see you, Eric. Is this your first time in or first time chatting, or did, I, did you fall through the cracks last time? Lily May, good job. Peyton Strasser, another new name. Hey, Peyton, you're correct. Lynn is correct. Gail's correct. Thelma, Malcolm, Carlos, CDP. So as Grays. Man, this is a fun game just reading your guys' names. Kurt Iriat. Malcolm Fox. That's a great name. William Beale. Bill Beale. Annette Cannon. Chad Miller. Hey, man. Mega delay here. Oh, no. I hope, uh, hope you can get that solved, Chad. Uh, good job, everyone. Dave, I hope you enjoy your free song credit. There's pop quiz number one. And what I'd like to do now is switch directly into our theme for the day. We're going to get composing, you guys. Check this out. What you should see on screen now is a blank canvas. We have 16 measures on screen right here. And our job for today is to fill in a lot of what we see here. I'm going to test Andrew and see if he's good. Let's highlight measure one. There's measure one right there. Where's measure 12, Andrew? <laughs> All right, he's quick on his toes. Good. Uh, let's see if we can see a quarter note somewhere. You pick the note, Andrew. All right. Everyone seeing that okay? I think we're good. So what I want to do here is get to the chat. Oh, first I want to say hello to Charlotte Ward. Hey, Char. I see you in the chat there. Um, there will be a quiz on this later on tonight. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, guys, here's what we need to do to get started on writing our song. We can't just jump in and start writing notes. Well, you could, but that's not how I want to kick this off. What I want to do first is start by defining two key things. One would be the key signature. The other would be the time signature. Now, how do we go about choosing such a thing? Well, the key signature is actually a bit more complicated, I would say, because there's more options, and each one has its own unique feel. So we want to pick a key that feels comfortable to us. Um, a more advanced composer might pick a key based on the feeling that that key has to the composer. Uh, Bach and Beethoven and the composers' names that you guys know, they all had kind of favorite keys and keys that felt good to them or better to them for a certain effect that they were going for. But what I want to do with our composition is narrow that in a little bit. I don't want us playing in the key of D-flat minor and then changing keys to A, you know. So, so we'll pick a key that is fairly comfortable to play in. And then for our time signature, I'm already seeing some chats coming through here. Kevin Murray saying key of B flat. All right, we'll keep that in mind. 
Uh, and Carlos, I'll, I'll answer your question as well. Is this my own composition? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Is this our composed function in the app? No, good question. So this, what I have here on screen is actually Sibelius. Uh, it's a common notation software. Uh, another common one would be Finale. And there's also some great free ones like MuseScore and a handful of other ones as well. I would definitely encourage anyone who's interested to check this kind of thing out. And uh, Carlos, you know, uh, MuseScore is great because you can try it for free. And it has a lot of the same tools that these other paid notation softwares have. Where they stand out is if you're writing for like a full orchestra or if you're Andrew arranging for your big band. Um, but when we're writing piano music, you know, uh, we can stay, we can be really confident that even the free program can, can serve us well. Uh, so let's get back to the tune here. Um, I'm seeing Sarah Pickle saying 4-4 four, four time signature to keep it simple so everyone can play. I like that thought, but I'm just going to go through this exercise real quick and think about how we might consider different time signatures. So here it's important that you feel the timing in your body. I like to tap my foot, maybe hit my hand on the top of the keyboard or on my knee. And you want to get a feel, honestly, even dance, dance along a little bit with these counts. You want to get a feel for what it might feel like. So a common one, as Sarah pointed out, would be 4-4. Four, four. And that's an easy one to feel. It's symmetrical. We're often, all, we're already used to counting in four in most music. So one, two, three, four. That repeats. Two, three, four. One. I hope you're all nodding your heads at home. That's the feel of 4-4. Four, four. Now, you could say that might be 2-2, two, 2-4, two, two, whatever. We'll, we'll lump all that into one category for now. Let's take a look at what a three time signature might feel like. Now, our pop quiz number one, the time signature was 3-4, three, three beats per measure. Much different feel. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. It kind of feels, well, it is a waltz. That's actually what a waltz is. It's something in 3-4. And you would dance accordingly, right, if you can picture that ballroom style of dancing. And so, having said that, what are we feeling? Sarah Pickle said she's feeling 4-4. Four, four. I like the logic with that. I wouldn't say 3-4 is necessarily too hard for, for people to play either. So I think this is going to be our first time to head to the chat and see what people are saying. I see Peyton Strasser saying, you want to waltz. Okay, that's a, a vote for 3-4. Sarah Pickle's vote for 4-4. Four, four. Uh, how about this? Well, you guys chat and, and add your votes in the chat. I'm going to play a little bit of both. I'm going to make something up. Don't focus on the notes. Just listen to the feel. This would be something in 4-4. Four, four. And here would be that same idea in 3. And I'm seeing 6-8 come through. You know what? I'm seeing it's about split right now. And so what I'd like to do is go with three. I'd like to go with three, four, and here's why. I saw some votes for three, I saw some votes for six. Those are kind of common, and there's obviously differences, but they're in the family of triple meter, okay? Well, six, eight actually is duple, forgive me. But when I hear six, I hear people thinking in groups of three, at least in this chat. And so since four, four is the most common, I actually think 3-4, and to Dave's point, as he just wrote, 3-4 also keeps it accessible for most, where 6-8, you're actually going to see likely more eighth notes, and, uh, and you're going to see more notes per measure as well. So guys, that was our first little de democratic decision. Um, democracy is still alive and well. We just made a decision. We're going to be in 3-4, and I can see Andrew has already updated our score. Check it out. All right. So three, four, we're going to be something like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But I'm just picking random notes for now. Now we got to get into the meat of today. What I want to talk about today, and my goal for the end of today's lesson, is to have a foundation for all 16 measures that you see on screen for the harmony. And notice I've got my left hand on screen here. We're going to be focusing on chords and harmony. But in order to do that, First, we need to define one more thing. Remember up front, I said we need to define the time signature and the key signature. 
And so if we're going to talk about what harmony to put down, it could be any note on the keyboard, right? Well, no, that would be intimidating. Picking a key signature helps us narrow the choices down. Oh, we'll pick notes from that scale. So along the lines of keeping this accessible, I'd like to pick a key and let's keep it at two accidentals or less. In other words, the key signature could either have zero sharps or one sharp or one flat or two sharps or two flats. Now, someone threw out the key of B flat. That's a nice key. Andrew's nodding his head. That might be his favorite key. Uh, B flat is a good one and there are two flats in that key signatures. Do I have any other suggestions for the key signature here? Do we want to be in the key of B flat? See another B flat vote? Now, whatever chord progression we play, by the way, guys, it's going to sound the same throughout the keys. I'll play a 1, 4, 5 progression. Here we are in B flat. Uh, 1, 4, 5. Let's pick a different key, G. Let's pick uh, E flat. All right, so don't get too caught up on the key because we can still use the progression itself within the key to kind of give this song some personality. Uh, and so I see another B flat, I see A minor, Malcolm Fox, cool, we got a minor key suggestion in there. Also a good key signature, zero sharps, zero flats. I'm seeing F, I'm seeing G, I'm seeing F. All right, I think what I'd like to do is, oh, here's an idea, you guys. Why don't we pick a key signature that doesn't change throughout our song, but maybe we can spend some time in major and then sometime in that relative minor. So for example, if we pick the key signature of zero sharp, zero flats, we could either be in the key of C or A minor. And we might well decide that we want to do the first half in major and the second half in minor or vice versa, right? So when we're picking our key signature, let's remember we have the relative major and the relative minor to choose from. Uh, and with that said, I'm seeing a lot of B-flats and Gs. Now, granted, it would be G minor, but I'm going to go ahead and pick B-flat, the key signature of two flats. That means B-flat or G minor. So Andrew's already on it. He's got two flats in that key signature. And just to review, that would be B-flat and E-flat. So here's our major scale. This is going to be a good key to be in. Everything I just did there was all based on one B flat major triad. Look at all the options we have here on just one chord. All right, so now we're ready to talk about harmony. And first I'd like to walk us through the B flat triads. Here's our one chord. Our two chord would be C minor. Don't forget, E flats are in the key signature. Our three chord, D minor. The four chord has two flats. We're going to bring our hand to the back of the keys. We're going to play E flat major. That's our four chord. Okay, moving on to F. That's our five chord. That's the dominant. Going up to six chord, that's G minor. Remember, that's our relative minor of B flat major. So the one of major and the six of major. Those are the, those are the relatives. Now we have the weird seven chord, the diminished. And then that finally lands us back to B flat an octave higher. So those are the chords that I think we should be choosing from for our song. And so in the spirit of just getting something down on paper and not being afraid to put down something that we might change later, let's dive right in. I'm going to ask you guys for some help. I would like us to figure out a four chord progression. I know we have more than four measures here, but we're going to start with a chunk of four. And I'm going to ask you guys to just put four numbers down, all right, one through seven. Keeping in mind, of course, that some of the chords are much more functional and therefore useful uh, than, than others. The seven chord is one that we often see, that we do not often see. Uh, the seven chord closely resembles the, uh, the five chord. There are, in fact, two of the three notes between the chords are shared. And if you combine that into a four note chord, that's actually just the full five chord. So, People often, when they want to use this kind of a chord, they don't really call it the seven chord. They would more functionally call it a five chord. 
And so that's one example where seven is maybe not the best choice to at least start with or, or, or end with. We may not even want to use it at all. Um, remember that the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord are major. And I'm seeing Sarah Pickle saying, let's keep it happy. Uh, and so there you go. One, four, and five are the major chords. We all know that if we use more major chords, it's going to feel a little more happy. Two, three, and six chords are minor. And so if we want to get kind of brooding and, and sad and mad and whatnot, we can use minor. And more likely, we want to use a contrast of some major and minor. So keep that in your mind as well. I'm already seeing some numbers come through. And what I really like is that so far, you guys have all started with the one chord. That lets me know that you guys understand that that's an important one and that's a defining one. Oh, Chad Miller coming at us with the Roman numerals. Nice. That's official right there. And that's a one, four, five, two. I like that. All right, so so far, Sarah Pickles is saying one, five, three, two. I'm going to play some of these and we can get a sense for them. Sarah, here's one, five, three, two in the key of B flat. And I'm, for now, I'm just keeping it triads, block chords. One, five, three, and two. That's pretty cool. Let's repeat that. Cool, Sarah. I like that. Let's keep it going. Lily May saying one, four, two, five. All right, so one. Now going up to four. That's already a different feel than Sarah's progression. I like it. Two, and then five. One, four, two, five. Great, Lily. I like that. A little fancier, but that's your progression, Lily. Uh, Lynn, one, three, five, six. Oh, this might be fun. Landing on a six. Uh, I like that. Let's try it. One, three. One to three is a nice motion. Five, and then six. That has a nice feel, right? Ending on the six kind of has a somber resolution. Okay, Chad Miller. Chad says one, four, five, and then two. That's a cool fake out, Chad. I like that. One, four, five really grounds us in this major feeling in the key. And then you don't expect to land on that, sorry, that two minor chord. That's cool. All these are valid, just different effects. Carlos, one, five, four. One, five, four is great um, and keeps it at the essence. I like that too. Uh, Sarah said, let's keep it happy. There's your, there's your happy progression. All right, Eric Rupp, one, four. Six and two. That's cool. Oh, I'm playing three on accent. Sorry, let's try that again. One, four, six, and two. That's a nice balance of one major, four major, six minor, two minor. Man, these are good choices, you guys. Okay, I'm seeing some patterns here. I'm seeing everyone starting with the one chord. So we're going to make that decision now. Andrew, can we get... Vanna White, can we get a B-flat major chord in root position? And let's make it a whole note for now. So he's got the B-flat, he's got the D, and the F. And I said a whole note, but I forgot our time signature here is 3-4. So a dotted half note gets us through the entire measure, and that's what we're going to be doing here. So there we go. Oh, I see some more suggestions here. Uh, Chad, had to end on a sadder triad. I like that, honestly. I think the most effective harmonic motion or progression is when you have a, a, a nice creative balance between major and minor. And I also like an unexpected thing. If you're in minor, I like an unexpected major. <laughs> you know, you can, you can set an expectation and then break it, and that's, that can be fun. Uh, so Sarah's saying you're like in a mix of Lily's and Chad's. So Lily had one, four, two, five. And Chad had one, four, five, two. So that's almost like an inversion towards the end, right? One, four, and then two, five. All right, I like those two. I still want to get a six in there somewhere. So we have a one, 
And I want to look at a progression here that has a six in it. I see Eric Rupp, one, four. Uh, Lily and Chad, you guys both had four. So why don't we make four our next chord? We're going to go up to a root position E flat triad. And remember, you guys, we can always go back and add to this. And in fact, I plan to. I want to revisit these chords and make them a little spicier and make them more rhythmic. But for now, I want us to be in the creation process. We've got to get out of our own way, not be afraid to put stuff on paper. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So far, so good, right? Now, I think people are saying they like the mix. Well, a few people are saying they like the mix of major and minor. We've got one and we've got four. We've got to get a minor chord in here, so let's vote. Do we want to see a two chord or a six chord in measure three? Let's see if we can get votes. The most votes wins. Just write two or six. And I'm going to just jam on our progression a little bit for now. Chad, great question. Chad Miller asks, can we do inversions? Most definitely, Chad. So again, what I like to do is lay down a foundation and then go back over it and add a layer uh, of, uh, we can call it complexity or of uh, just kind of taking it a step further. And one thing I like to do, I mentioned, is add uh, some rhythm to this left hand stuff. So eventually we'll do stuff like this. Instead of going one, two, three, one, two, three, we can try stuff like this. One, two, three, one two, three, right? Or one, two, three. We could even open up our positions a little bit. And included in those options will also be inversions. And in fact, even though chord inversions can be a little bit more complicated for some rookies, what you'll find is that when we have our progression set, the inversions will actually help you play the chord progression because you won't have to jump around as much. So notice one, to four, I'm moving my whole hand, and I have to move into a different shape, right? If I were to invert that, it would look like that maybe, or this. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Chad, I definitely want to want to get there, but first, let's keep it to root positions, and, uh, and we'll spice it up from there. All right, I'm seeing some votes. I'm seeing twos, I'm seeing sixes. Yeah, good point, Sarah, I'll show you. So uh, here's what it would be like with two next. Here's one, two. And remember, we can also hold a chord for more than one measure or play it again in the next measure. So if we like hitting this two chord, we could even play it again, right? It could go like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three again, if we want to. Okay, there's two. Now, here, instead of two, we'll try it with six. And you guys let me know what you're feeling better. One, two, three. One, two, three. So either going to two, C minor, or going to six, G minor. I'm seeing a few more votes for six than two, but Sarah, since you said you wanted me to, to show you, I'll give you another few, few minutes here to, uh, to just jot your, your answers down, and then we will add that. Okay, Eric Rupp is getting creative. I'm digging this. He's saying, how about two next, and then inverted three? Let me explore this here. Here's two, and here's three. So if we were going to invert the three, we could either do it like this, or like this. But what I want to do here, aside from saying keeping it to root positions just for now, um, what I want to do is try to avoid I want to try to avoid for now this parallel motion where we move up or down by, by one, okay? It's not technically parallel motion, but I want to have some jumps is what I'm saying. So one to four instead of one to two, because I do want us to challenge ourselves a bit. And when we then do add inversions, it's actually going to be easier to do if we have chords where we jump. In other words, 
Going from two to three, there are no shared chord tones, so it won't necessarily help us to play two and an inverted three, right? But if we have one to four, there is a shared note, it's B flat. So we would actually be able to keep that right there, and that would be a nice inversion. So, uh, and here is a comment that I'm just seeing come through that really is just reaffirming this notion that I don't want to go too, 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 too hard, too, too quickly here, because I think we're already over, over some people's heads, and we don't want to do that. So um, I'm seeing actually after I demoed it, I think a lot more people said two. So Andrew, let's throw a two in there. So we've got B flat, we've got E flat, and the two chord, of course, is C minor. And JD Voice Talent, what's up? He says, what did I miss? Well, we've already started to write a few chords, as you can see. I hope you'll contribute here now that you've joined us. Thanks for hanging. Um, here's our two chord. And what I'd like to do is play it again in the next measure. So Andrew, can you add another C minor, please? And uh, I'm just going to loop this for a second. One, two, three, one, two, three, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, now, I really like that. Good work so far, guys. What I would like to talk about now is this notion of repetition to create sections, to create a form, okay? We don't want to start scratch, from scratch in every measure and say, now what chord do we want? Now what chord do we want? What we would end up with is 16 measures of a random chord progression. It may not feel like a section of a song. It may feel like a chord exercise, okay? So, if we're writing a song, we need to know what that means. We need to know that most songs within sections have four to eight chords, most, more often two to four, that repeat. I'm not saying we have to repeat our first four measures exactly, but I do want to show you what it feels like when we repeat it. If I do repeat it, you will get a sense that it's a song. It's funny how this works. One, two, three. Right? So uh, you get the sense that the vocalist was about to come in and start singing the lyrics there. I, but remember I talked earlier about setting up an expectation and then maybe breaking it? Well, here is the perfect time to do that. So what we have is a four chord progression, well, a four measure progression. A common way to then look at the next four measures would be to start the chord progression the same way, but then maybe come up with a different ending of that. So before I ask Andrew to add anything, I'll just play. Um, we were just debating whether we should do two or six. What if this time, in the next four measures, we played B flat, E flat, and then six? That might sound like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. Again. Two, three. Here comes six after this. Boom. Here's what my ear wants to hear. <laughs> after that. But what do we think? I think that's actually a good way to bring in all you other guys who wanted the six chord. I think we should do that. So let's go ahead and take our first four measures and kind of copy and paste the first two over there. Yep. And then in our measure seven, we're now going to put the six chord instead of the two chord. But instead of doing another six chord after that, I'd like to go to a new chord. So I need you guys' uh, vote again. Where do we want to see this six chord go? So first we did one, four, and then we did two different two chords in a row. Okay. Now we have, again, one, four, six, and I would like to go to a new chord. My vote is five, but don't worry about me. This is about you guys here. I want you guys to help me write this. So we can go to six and then something else. And my preference here would be, let's have it be a chord that we maybe haven't tried yet. Um, and so we've got a one, a four, and a two, and a six. That means we've got three and five and seven. I'm gonna tell us to just hang on seven for now. Let's not have that be an option. So we need to, we need to make a vote. Dave is saying he likes six to five. Um, let's go ahead and see what six to three would sound like. Two, three, one, two, three. Here comes six, and here's three. 
That's kind of cool too, a little bit more unexpected. Um, but when we go from six to five, it feels a little bit more expected. Now, if everything you did was unexpected, it would lose the effect, right? So in order to have some genuine unexpected effect, you also have to set expectations and meet them <laughs> other times, right? And so what I like about going to five here is that it's the first time we've seen our five chord in the first eight measures. The five chord is arguably, you guys, the most important chord in the key. I mean, the other one up for debate would be maybe the one chord, um, but the five chord, honestly, is, is very, very important, very defining. And one reason is because it naturally, to our ears, wants to resolve to the one chord. It just feels really nice to land there. And in fact, the five chord can often feel, excuse me, I'm in the wrong key. Uh, <laughs> I keep going back to C. So the five chord here would be F to one, right? Uh, what I like about the five chord here is that it wants to, it, it wants to wrap up a phrase. Uh, another way you could say that is it wants to lead into a new phrase. And I'm seeing everyone in the chat is digging six to five. Let's just go ahead and add that. Um, and so G minor, and we're going to end it on the five chord. This is awesome. I'm going to repeat this real quick, guys. And just give me 30 seconds to just jam on this. I'm going to fill it out a little bit just to show you what's possible from this framework. But then I'll bring it back home, and we'll keep going in the next eight bars, okay? Uh, let's see. Let's try this. I'm loving this, you guys. Uh, who said that? J JD Voice Talent says that sounded dramatic. Oh, no. Chad says Elton John just called and said, sorry, that progression is his and only his. If Elton John's lawyers were watching closely, I would feel pretty proud, actually, guys. Uh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. We create, we, there's no way we could have pre-planned this, right? We were going through, I was taking your guys' suggestions. And here we are. What I take Chad's comment to mean is, that this sounds like a real song. And that's, that's one of the things I really wanted you guys to see, is that we take a few minutes to talk about time signature, key signature, so we can put some parameters down, and then we make some intentional choices about what chords we want within that key, and before you know it, we got a whole song. I love that, and that's exactly right. So let's keep this moving, guys. Um, <clears throat> right now, we have what feels like it could be a section, but it also feels like it could be the first half of a larger section. And so let's take this idea where we had the first four measures and then we copy and pasted it but with kind of a different ending. Let's now do that with our larger eight measure phrase. And we won't do it in the notation just yet, but I want to imagine that we're going to take the top eight bars from the left hand and bring it down to the bottom eight measures, but then come up with a different ending, okay? That's a very common device for writing a section that's about this length. Um, again, we want to feel some repetition here. And uh, Chad Miller, you're right. We have an entire year until the next Grammys. So, uh, you know, we got time, guys. We got to put this work in, and you never know what can happen. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is just jam on this for a minute, and I'm going to repeat the first eight measures, but then we're going to try some different stuff as, like, the second ending, okay? One, two, three. One, two, three. So yeah, here, I think what we need to do is to break the pattern of playing one to four. That's a suggestion here. And again, we've set up the expectation. Now we can break it a little bit. Every time we've had a one chord so far, we've followed it with the four chord. So what could we do here? And by the way, we can use chords we've already used. 
Um, we can do some repeat chords now. But what could we do here instead of one to four? Well, let's think about what our options would be here. Oh, Lily has a suggestion. End it with a one on the second line. That's a great idea, Lily. And in fact, I was going to get to that point when we got to the end, but I love that you got there first. The one chord is a great chord to end a song on. And maybe it's obvious, but that feels like home. That feels like we've arrived in a landing place. And so ending on the one chord is a great idea. Andrew, let's get a, let's get a B flat major chord at the end. Lily's already helped us figure out what our last chord can be. And for now, we'll just keep it the same voicing uh, as we have in measure one. <clears throat> All right. So now we've got seven measures to fill in. And I kind of like starting the bottom line the same way we did up front, to be honest. I like this B flat to E flat and then two C minors. Um, but what I want to do is to figure out what happens next. We go to, in fact, we don't even have to go back to one. Let's, let's leave it here. So yeah, we'll do, we'll do those four measures again. But then I need your guys' help to figure out what we do next. Do we go back to one? If so, let's not then go to four. But we don't have to go back to one, right? We can do this. And then we could go somewhere else. We could go up to three. I mean, we could do a handful of things, but let's just pick the next one. Where do we want to go after measure 12? I'm thinking I don't want to go back to one. Lily. <laughs> Lily gets a gold star. That's right. Yeah, that's helpful, Lily. Um, so, guys, I need some help. Throw out some chords. Where do we want to go in measure 12? Anyone have an idea? So far, um, you know, I think we haven't used... Is there one we haven't used? We haven't used three. It doesn't mean we have to, um, but we could. Lily's saying five. Okay, so we, let's see how that would sound. One, four, two, two, now going to five. That's nice. Sarah's saying jump to five, two. If I see another five, that's what we're going with. Anybody else like that five? Part of me also wants to hear it kind of stay on this five. I don't know about you guys. Um, for the most part, we're changing chords every measure, except for our two chord which we have twice in a row. Kevin Murray saying, have, step, have a step down progression from six to one. Whoa, all right, let's try that. So that would mean something like this. <laughs> Moving down through all our chords kind of quickly. That's actually a cool motion that might be a little advanced for some of our more rookie users here, but I like what you're thinking here. Instead of just picking random numbers, you're thinking of some patterns and some order, which is important. Uh, I see a couple more fives. Andrew, let's go ahead and get a, an F chord up there. That's our five chord. And do we want to repeat the five chord? Do we want to go somewhere else? So once again, from measure nine, it goes. Ooh, Sarah's saying slide to three. That's nice. And then what if we went to six and four? No, we already have one at the end. So. Let's see, so we're on, we got five, slide to three. That's cool, that, that, that's one option. Anybody else? Three to me doesn't feel like it's the, it, like we're wrapping up a section. It almost feels like we're starting a new section. Um, it's all, that's all subjective, of course, but what we need to do now, our challenge now is to figure out how to get from measure 13, excuse me, from measure 12, which is the five chord, down to measure 16, which is the one chord. So really, we have two measures to, to fill in here. How do we get from five, chord, chord, one? Repeat, repeat, I think you built, you think it builds up, Lily Mae? I think that's a great call because what we're, what we're doing here with the five chord is kind of building tension a little bit. We have this tension that finally wants to eventually resolve to one. And so putting a chord in to repeat, to build tension, is a great compositional technique. And, Lily, I bet you already have, have figured out that when we then finally do resolve to one after building that extra tension, it's going to feel even more satisfying. Chad Miller says he's putting this in his DAW as we work. That's really cool. And anyone else who's got this kind of... Uh, a setup or that you can do uh, this kind of notation on your own, I would encourage you to do the same and then you can even keep making your own tweaks uh, on your own. But for those of you who don't have that, 
don't worry. Next week, we're going to pick up where we left off here. We're going to still have all the stuff we've done. And by the end of the month, my goal, this isn't confirmed yet, but I think it would be super, super cool to actually publish our song in the interactive app for free, of course, and let you guys download it and learn it. I think it would be so fun. Maybe we could even put a backing track behind it, but we'll figure that out. Uh, but yes, I think, um, I think what we should do here is fill in these two measures uh, before our lesson is up for the day. And so uh, I like the idea of five repeating. So Lily, let's take that. And Carlos, I see you, you like two five chords as well. And then you want to go to a two before we resolve to one. That could sound nice. Two to one is, uh, is nice. Two resembles four, and four to one is a very common progression. So let me play that for you a bit. Um, this is what it would sound like with a five chord, and then another five chord, and then a two chord, and then our final one chord. Ready? I'll take it from measure nine. So here's B flat, two, three, B flat, two, three. Here comes our five, and we'll do another one. Here's two. one. Ooh, I like that. That was pretty cool. So, Carlos, I like kind of going from two to one at the end. Um, Dave is saying five, three, two, one for the final four. So that's similar to uh, what Carlos is saying, but instead of doing two fives to two to one, Dave, you're saying maybe go five to three to two to one. And you know what else I like about that, Dave, is who suggested doing a six to one walk down? I'm forgetting now. Uh, Kevin. Was it Kevin? Uh, I believe you, Aiden. I can't find it. But if it was Kevin that said to do the walk down, um, that one was a bit complicated walking down from six all the way. But if we start from three and walk down, it could be a little more manageable and you still get that effect. So three, two, one. Also, five and three are somewhat related as well because they also share two common chord tones. So here's our five chord, F, A, C. The three chord is D, F, A. So again, functionally speaking, it, it kind of serves a similar purpose. Uh, Chad Miller suggests, Andrew, can we get a PDF of the sheet music after each lesson? That's not a bad idea because then we can kind of see how we built upon it. Uh, it may not be right after the lesson, but sometime this week I'll get you guys a PDF and maybe we'll post it to the, uh, the Facebook group. Uh, and uh, that's a good call. Uh, Chad, maybe we'll even tag you in that and uh, we, can, we can do that tomorrow. Yeah, that should be pretty easy. Um, so guys, I'm thinking I'd like to go with what Dave is saying, 5, 3, 2, 1. I think it's important to hit 5. And I did like the idea of doing two fives in a row. But again, going to three is very similar to five, so in a way it's, it's kind of the same. So we'll go five, three, two, one. Now we're poised to either repeat our whole song or move on into a new section or end or whatever, right? This is great. You guys, great job on this. We have started with a one chord. We've ended with a one chord. We've used all of the chords except seven, which is common, uh, in our first 16 measures. This is great. So here, I'm going to play through this. This is our entire chord progression so far for the first 16 measures. And then I'll do it again and kind of maybe elaborate on it a bit. And then we're going to wrap this thing up for today, okay, you guys? Um, here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. going to five and walking down two and one let's repeat I messed it up, guys. All right, I'm starting at measure nine. Here's B flat. Here's E flat. And C minor. And here comes our five. Three, two, one. I'm 
doing all sorts of right hand stuff that seems fancy, but it's all based on basic harmony that we're doing in the left hand. We're going to get to this stuff a lot more in the right hand next week. So what we're going to do is keep our chords as they are now. I'm really liking this so far. It actually has already exceeded my expectations. I don't even know what I expected, but <laughs> this has been fun, and I really like it. So we're going to keep it as it is now. Next week, we're going to start to think about how we add melody to this. How do we know what notes to choose? What scales we use? Will that note work over the other chord too? How do we know, right? So we're going to talk about that, and we'll actually start to craft a basic melody. Uh, we'll take it from there, you guys. So before we wrap up the day, let's go ahead and get into another pop quiz, all right? I want to give you guys one more chance. Um, and Chad, if Elton, if Elton John wants in on this, he can call my agent. Because um, <laughs> this is our song, all right? If he wants a, uh, a songwriter credit on this, he's going to have to, we're going to have to have a talk, all right? Um, Chad, if you know him, just let him know. <laughs> all right, pop quiz number two, you guys. Uh, we're going to change keys right now, okay? This, this quiz uh, question has to do with a certain key. I'm going to ask you what a chord is in a key, and it's not the key we've been in. So I need you to take a second and clear your mind of the key of B flat. This is no longer one, this is no longer two, no longer three, okay? What I'm going to do is ask you about a new key, and I'm going to say, what chord, what would the five chord be of that key? Are you ready? So we're going to say two dash, and then your answer. And you don't have to say, just put the letter of the chord, okay? Uh, Here's the question. What would the five chord be in the key of F major? So in other words, F is the one chord. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. F is the one chord. And if F is one, then what is the five chord? Let's see if you guys can come up with that. And I'm going to look for the third correct answer on this one. The third correct answer. And there's also an opportunity to earn a bonus song credit. You actually could get two if you tell me what the five chord is called in its four note version. Okay, you don't have to. You can just write the letter of the chord. But if you want to give me the four note chord version, you could also win too. Okay, so I'm looking for the third correct answer. And what is the five chord in the key of F? All right, I'm seeing it. Looks like I got uh, Malcolm Fox, correct answer. You were the first. Great work with the fast fingers. But I'm looking for the third correct winner here. I see Dave is number two. You got it right as well. Lily May, you are the third winner. But Lily, you already won one today, and so I want to see if I can get another person to win one today. I hope that's okay with you so we can share the wealth. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it to the next one down, and that is Chad Miller, my man. Okay, so you get a free song credit for that. And the correct answer is C major. Now, the bonus credit could have gone to you if you said C7, because the five chord is actually a dominant seven chord. But that's okay. We haven't gone over that yet. All right, guys, let's go ahead and leave it there for today. I'm super pumped about this. And really, I, I already laid out what we're doing next week. I will see you guys then. Thank you. And this is called an augmented triad. So we have major. For dominant seven chords, we have a major triad with a flat seven. It's very similar to what Harry showed, but it has a bit more of a bluesy feel. So we